Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Nwako, your host, every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. It's great to see you once again. And we've got another exciting show lined up for this evening. Today, we're speaking to um, Devin Wells as well as Henning Klopper. These are both the co-founders of Zuni Wagyu, which is quite an interesting business. Um, it's about beef farming. And I like the term Wagyu, which I'll explain shortly. But gentlemen, thank you for coming on to the show. Tell us about Zuni Wagyu and how are you doing? I, I forgot to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Bali, thank you so much for having us. Uh, firstly, we really appreciate the opportunity and yeah, we look forward to the chat. Um, my name is Devin Wells and this is uh, Henry hey, Klopper. Um, and yeah, we, we, we from, from Zuni Wagyu, yeah, we're actually quite a young business. We've um, uh, or uh, us too. We own the, the company was only registered in the beginning of this year. It is oh, a generational wow. business. Yeah, um, we have taken over from our, our, our dads. Our dads are actually best friends. Um, a long story short, so um, Henning's family moved down to the Eastern Cape from uh, Johannesburg in 2007. Next door to us and our, our, our family became best friends. And since then, uh, a friendship has then um, emerged into a partnership. Um, so we've actually, we come from two different uh, farming backgrounds. Um, we used to farm with ordinary Angus cattle and we used to have a beef stud, an Angus stud. And um, um, Hank used to have a, a commercial stud. So we combine, now we combine uh, the, um, the, the genetics of our past with our uh, um, Wagyu of the future or of the present. Yeah. Um, so we, our, our Henning's dad went to Australia in 2010. They went to Australia in 2010 and had the, his first Wagyu experience. And then when he came back, our families decided that we should maybe start farming with Wagyu together. And in 2014, both farms merged together and we started, they started the business Zuni Wagyu. The reason why it is called Zuni Wagyu is because we farm in the Zuni Valley um, quite close to Alexandria, um, about 80 kilometers east of Port Elizabeth. Um, and we've actually, we both quit our jobs last year and moved back to the farm this year to take over the business and, and, and onwards and upwards from, from so forth. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so essentially our, our fathers are responsible for raising the cattle. And then once it's gone to the abattoir from there, we take over the reins and um, we've got a deboning facility on the farm. So we've got control of the entire um, value chain almost. And then from there, we send our Wagyu literally across the country to wherever you are. Wow. Well, it sounds amazing, guys. Tell me, what were you doing before that? Uh, you, uh, Devin, you said you quit your jobs. So what were you doing? <laughs> Henny, what were you doing as well before uh, Zuni Wagyu? <laughs> I studied agricultural economics at university um, and then um, went away to work. I came back and, and did my postgraduate teaching certificate and I was a teacher, a geography teacher for two years um, last year and the year before. Um, but I've always had a passion for farming, always had a passion for beef. And um, me and Helen decided last year, we're actually driving in the bucky on the farm, one of our farm holiday on, on, on the holiday in the, in the holidays on the farm, and we both just had a conversation like, "What do you really want to do one day?" And we both just said we really have a passion for meat, and we have a passion for 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 um, we, they were the wild factor in beef, and we really want to be that wild factor in, in South Africa. So um, that's where that's where the idea started, and then eventually we just decided, you know what, this is something that we we have to do. <laughs> yeah. Interesting, Henny. What were you uh -huh. doing? Um, I was head of operations at a company called Freedom of Movement um, for since I started. Yeah, I was actually one of their first employees and grew with the business. And obviously, um, a small business growing into quite a large retail business, I, I gained quite a lot of experience, especially in the logistics side of things. And that's kind of where both of us said, well, um, his family and his dad has this amazing talent of deboning Wagyu carcasses because you, you cut it slightly different to normal beef. And I've also got the logistics and retail experience to kind of take a product um, online and to market. So we said, why don't we com combine it? Because I think that that's quite an interesting talk card is that the fact that due to COVID, you can now order any, a good quality Wagyu steak and have it delivered to your door. Um, where previously South Africans, I think, were a little bit nervous to buy things on, online. 
and we're actually now asking them to buy meat online. But we, I mean, we've done over two and a half thousand shipments and been very successful. Uh, you know, no big major faults there. So. Yeah. Gentlemen, just to get into the technicalities of this, right, because I'm hearing you saying beef and I'm hearing you saying Wagyu um, in, in, in like in different uh, terms, right? So is it safe to say that Wagyu is beef or Wagyu is a specific type of meat? So um, Wagyu is, is a breed that originated in Japan. Just to give you a little um, history lesson quickly. So um, in Japan... They were used as as um, track dealer, so they were used to to pull plows and to pull carts. Um, so they have an, a, a wagyu carcass or a wagyu animal has an overdeveloped forequarter and a smaller hindquarter. That's one of the reasons why you get so many different cuts out of a out of a wagyu carcass than you would out of an ordinary beef carcass. So wagyu actually means our cattle in Japanese. So in other words, it means Japanese cow or Japanese cattle. Uh huh. Okay. And um, is, is the Wagyu uh, cattle best grown in South Africa? Um, you know, is, or are there other breeds that surpass Wagyu, for example? Well, we, we obviously Wagyu farmers, so we're always going <laughs> to tell you that uh, Wagyu beef is going to be the best. But the, to be quite honest, yeah, Wagyu beef, there isn't really much that comes close to it, uh, we feel personally. Um, obviously, the... the main difference is the quality of the fat um, and the fat content within the meat itself. So there's a term marbling. I don't know if you've heard of the word marbling before. So marbling is intermuscular fat within, within the muscles. So that's what makes um, Wagyu different to ordinary beef is the fact that they have um, fat stored on the inside of their muscles. In Japan, very cold. Obviously, the animals not only had to store fat on the outside to survive, but also had to store fat on the inside of their muscles. And obviously fat is energy as well. And in, in order for them to produce enough energy, they had to store fat on the inside of their muscles. And we all know that fat is flavor. So that's why you get a juicy, tender, tender cutting um, primal or, or a tender steak or a juicy steak is because of the, the extra amount of fat in the meat. Yeah. All right. So let's get into both your roles because you said the, the parents are primarily involved in the primary production. Uh, Henning, you're head of operations. Just tell us about what your portfolio within Zuni Wagyu um, entails. So essentially, um, Devin and I also kind of split our roles as in our parents raise the cattle and then send it to the abattoir. So, and then Devin was responsible to raise, to debone the carcass and then cut it up, obviously, into different steaks. I'm, from the moment it leaves the, the, uh, the, the meat room, I'm responsible. So what we do is obviously we're selling a luxury product. Um, it's not been around the bush. It, it is more expensive than normal beef. It okay. is really the money worth in our opinion. What's nice is that there's so many other lesser known cuts that people are now starting to explore. So from the moment it leaves, we, we've obviously got um, in a polystyrene cooler boxes and then an outer box, which we package it. And so with tissue papers, we, we, we're trying to sell a story here and kind of, give people this entire experience of like the box opening of it. So from there, we then give you on that evening, once it's sent out, we give you an estimated time of arrival. We then, co I then coordinate with the client the entire time to make sure that they're available at that time. And then obviously once we have delivery, I then go and check in with the client and make sure that they're happy at, at the end of the day, happy client, happy life. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, so your, your, your focus, Henning, is de definitely from uh, business to consumer, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. What made you decide to focus directly on the consumer and not go wholesale and sell in bulk? That's an interesting question. So COVID definitely, as I mentioned earlier, played in our favor in the sense of people want to have a good piece of steak at home, and we're one of the only companies that can offer them. I mean, we've sent to, from... Literally, as they mentioned, 80 kilometers east of P, we've sent to Lepalale, we've sent to uh, Trichard, we've sent to Richards Bay, we've sent to Sutherland. Uh, we're a little bit nervous sometimes, but we always get it there successfully. So we, we ensure that it stays cold for four days, but we get delivery at two. So where everyone's focused on keeping the cold chain in the sense of keeping the vehicle cold, we then rather say, let's focus on the inside of the box. Uh, there's a lot of people that ask us how we do it. Uh, and and they think we're crazy as well. Yeah, they, a lot of people thought we were crazy last year when we said that we want to do this. 
But I mean, we've done two and a half thousand shipments and it, it's really been, we've had three issues. One was due to the Durban riots. The other one was a missed delivery. And the other one was, uh, we had a new guy in here, unfortunately, didn't take the box. So <clears throat> it's all things that were a little bit out of our control, but three out of two and a half thousand is, is quite a <clears throat> good rate. Mm. Absolutely. And I mean, when you, and with any startup, with any business, you know, you're always going to have mistakes. I mean, there are companies that have been around for 50, 100 years and are still, you know, um, still trying to get it right because the consumer at the end of the day constantly invo- evolves. Um, Devin, you're head of marketing as well as deboning. So maybe explain to us the deboning process. Is it, does it mean that I'm buying meat without bones and I'm only eating fat? <laughs> or, um, you know, and, and, and how's the marketing channels like, like we've already um, uh, established with Henning that, you know, your strategy is more from Zuni to the consumer instead of the business. So um, from the deboning process, are you thinking of the consumer first and then you're deciding how to package it so that the consumer can consume the product? Yeah, so we actually focus on, 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 on obviously our website, basically our retail customer, but we actually do specified orders as well. So people ask us for specific, specific things. So some of, the thing, some of the products that you see on our website, we actually tailor to the individual customer as well. So there are people that are asking us to do certain things every, every day. Um, but yeah, what happens is the, the animals leave either our farm or, or, or Henning's farm um, and they are transported to an abattoir in Grahamstown. Okay. Um, they are then the animals are then slaughtered in, in or harvested in Grahamstown, and then um, they are graded at the abattoir as well because there is uh, a, we need to obviously have an external grading system in order for us to 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 keep track and and, and gather data about our, our, our beef, um, which is a completely different conversation on itself. Then it gets transported back to the farm where it ar- then arrives in u- an ordinary carcass would be. Um, would be transported in quarters, but a wagyu carcass weighs between 500 and 550 kilograms. Um, um, in, where in comparison, an ordinary beef carcass weighs between 320 and 380 um, kilograms. So it's a lot. It's a lot heavier. So we we actually don't transport the animal in quarters. It's actually sometimes in five or six pieces because they also have to do the grading between the fifth and the sixth rib. Um, for us to measure the, the eye muscle or the fat content within the ribeye in order for us to have the marbling score per se. So the meat then comes into the deboning facility. It is, it is then cut into certain primals. Um, as we mentioned earlier as well, uh, the, the forequarter, as they have an open bit of the forequarter. So there are a lot of different cuts that some people might have never heard of. So like the flat iron that comes out of the blade or the Denver that sits below the chuck. Or the chaka that's above the ribeye between the the chuck and the or the neck and the ribeye, um, the rib steak. So it's a short rib of of the animal. The the so the pork belly of of beef, you'd say. So there are a lot of there's a lot of different cuts. Then we we actually then obviously have to make sure that we um, we're very accurate with our cutting process because it's it's a it's an expensive product. So if you cut away a centimeter of steak or a centimeter here and there, you're losing money. So we, we are very fortunate to, to have quite a good team that work with us in the deboning facility as well. Um, and uh, we really focus on attention to detail. And then after that, obviously focus on making sure that the clients are happy. And then once that product has then been put into the package, Henning takes charge and then it gets sent to the customer. Yeah. Um, still with you, Devin, then, you know, customers can sometimes disappoint, um, you know, and people would say, you know, the economy is not doing so well. I'm a vegetable farmer. And I know that, you know, having supply to retailers and some wholesalers, you know, um, businesses will tell you that the number of the footprint of people walking in stores, never mind online, has slightly dropped because, you know, the average income in the household has slightly dropped. So with your strategy as a, a Zuni, focusing on more on consumers, how do you manage the demand versus the supply? Are there times, having been around for a year now, are there times where, you know, there's too much meat from the abattoir and you just don't, and, and there are less customers buying? Do you find where you kind of like, maybe we need to expand it a little bit more to uh, a bulk buyer because you know the individual customer is not buying and like you said it is a premium product so i suppose it doesn't come cheap um and there's you know so much technicalities in what you were just explaining uh devon around the processing 
of it. So how do you manage the, the supply and the demand, especially in, a, in an economic climate that we're faced in uh, with a premium or a luxury product? Um, and will that push you or pull you rather to maybe focus on the bulk buyer slash wholesale slash retail client? Um, so obviously um, with, with an expensive product or a luxury product, you've got a certain target market or a certain LSM that you're trying to target. Um, so they're obviously trying to create small pockets in, in, in certain areas or in, in certain clientele in order for us to be able to, to, to or not even get rid of but sell all of our products. Um, but our strategy per se has actually been to, to try and focus um, our trim products on the wholesale market. And then try and focus our our, our, our primals and our stakes where we where we obviously um, add a add a markup to that quite a, a proportionate markup to that. The reason being that obviously, uh, let's take a, a carcass that weighs five hundred kilograms. People don't people think that if you have a carcass that weighs five hundred kilograms, you're going to have six hundred or four hundred kilograms of steak. They don't realize that <laughs> there's bones, there's fat, there's trimmings, there's there's this this wastage, there's sinews, there's so much in that carcass that you can't actually sell at a pre premium price. So we've actually made the joke plenty of times that we actually just glorified patty <laughs> salesmen. Um, we, because we, we have a sustainable model where we need to make sure that we have to sell all of our trimmings before we can sell our steak. Um, so out of a beef carcass that weighs, or a wagger carcass that weighs 500 kilograms, you get about 200 and, between 220 and 250 kilograms of trimming. So that's your mince, your boss, and your patties. So for us to sell 20 or 30 kilograms of steaks, we have to sell 250 kilograms of trim. So that's where we try to focus on our bulk sales being our wholesale market. So we have, uh, um, we in, and, in, in all, all the Hudson's in the country. So our burger is actually on the menu in all, the, all eight Hudson's in, in South Africa. Um, we've now started um, a, a slow rollout with Cattle Baron as well. Um, and then obviously we, we try and um, focus on, on getting our, our, our trim through the wholesale market and then we make sure that we keep our clients, state clients happy per se. So we've got restaurants that are often asking us for a constant supply of ribeye or sirloin or flat iron or, or steak cuts to, to, to sell in their restaurant. And we actually just tell them, very sorry, but we can't help you because we don't have enough supply. So that's where the question right. is. We don't have enough animals to be able to scale it at this moment. So that's one of the issues that we actually have. I think that's an interesting touching point that, that David also touched on is that the Wagyu is this, is this new buzzword in, in the meat industry. And yeah. people also used to, I mean, before, before, before this year, I would walk into a small web and, and buy a ribeye steak and not think about the entire rest of the product. And with this whole new buzz that's going around Wagyu, the, at the end of the day, if, if it carries on increasing like this demand, there's not going to be enough supply in the country because... What's also very different about Wagyu is that you don't raise it for one year or 18 months like a normal carcass. It's, it's literally three years. So what that means is the carrying capacity on your farm also divides by three. So it's a long, slow process, and you can't really take shortcuts. Because if, if you push it, let's say, for you know, say heavily in feedlot and try and only slaughter it after two years, you're going to get almost like a forced marbling. So we try and do that like slow, slow natural marbling when you... You see marbling, don't you need to try to look for small, thin veins of fat instead of big, coarse um, pieces of fat. That's almost like a little bit of a forced uh, marbling, if I can put it that way. Um, so, yeah, that's where, yeah. Mm. Wow, I guess perfection and premium takes time, hey? Um, before I get to my next question, uh, which is directed at you, Henning, I just want to encourage uh, at Anna M or at Marigotzi to comment on tonight's live so that you could claim a 500 Rand cash prize, as well as Josiah Farival to claim your 500 cash prize for our Know Your Crop competition. If this live ends and you haven't said anything, uh, unfortunately, uh, you will forfeit your prize. So please comment on tonight's live, say anything, hashtag know your crop, hashtag private property, hashtag wag you, uh, which is part of our discussion this evening. Going back to you, Henning. Um, so how is the online sales been since you started? I mean, you, you, you mentioned a very interesting stat, 2000 plus um, orders, you know, and the fact that you also come from uh, your previous uh, um, job or employment 
also dealt with a bit of online sales, et cetera. So how's this type of business different to, you know, your average uh, retail sales? Because now we're dealing with meat and hey, it's, it's, it's waggy. Like you said, it's quite premium. Yeah. So at the end of the day, we are still selling a fresh product. And as I mentioned earlier, it's South African consumers in general have been very wary to purchase things online, which is understandable. Um, a lot of things can go wrong in a courier process. So it's, it's, it's a very difficult thing to monitor. But overall, the response has really been amazing. And, and nothing short of that, our clients, we've, we've picked up data that 70% of the clients who placed the order first time around actually placed the second or third order. And that's a very positive sign that our systems are working so that people start to realize, hey, it is actually really easy for me to get this awesome product delivered to their door. Mm. Another challenge that we also kind of found is that if you, you cook Wagyu slightly different to normal um, steaks, it's mm. because of the high fat content, you can easily get it out, crusty outside um, quite quickly. And then to go into more depth, cuts like Denver or flat iron is a more dense muscle. So it takes about one and a half times longer to cook it, uh, to cook a steak of, this, of the same size. <laughs> so what we did to, to kind of counter that is we add cooking guidelines and instructions into the package because at the end of the day, buying Wagyu, it, it's, wow. it's got a high price and it, it can be a daunting task to be like, Okay, I, I really don't want to mess this up. So that we, we kind of baby and, and like groom them into being, okay, it is actually easy. And this is the hot tops and guidelines. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It makes me hungry already. And, and I think that's <laughs> such a fantastic thing that you've added there because, you know, you just hear wag you and I kind of like want to order now, but I want to make sure that I'm cooking it right so that it doesn't take taste awful, you know, because the way um, uh, Devon explained the deboning process and the fat and the this and the percentage, you kind of like, geez, I, I, you know, I never thought meat would be that complicated. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Exactly. And, and, yeah. So I think it's such a, a genius idea to actually add, recipe instructions or cooking instructions. And maybe um, I'll ask this question to Devon. It could be an, op an opportunity here, but have you considered maybe partnering with other online, uh, um, other online fresh produce delivery company? One that I can quickly think of is like a you cook, you know, because you could go onto their websites, they give you recipes and they give you the raw product, right? And then you cook, you know. So let's say a bachelor was ordering and he or she, he doesn't know how to um, cook. Would you look at partnering with like a you cook, for example, to add your wagyu your beef um, and have your recipe in there, you know, for, for greater partnerships and expansions? Uh, we, we're always, obviously, always looking to, to partner with, the, um, with, with the online platforms. And we actually are Farm Direct. Um, we actually... Yeah started working with farm direct um so we we obviously i think the most important thing here is 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 that we need to make sure that we're working with other people in order to to grow wagyu as a whole in south africa you know we're obviously trying our best to in in order to create a good product a, a zuni wagyu brand but in inevitably inevitably the all pro, pro producers in south africa are, are, are under the same brand being wagyu so we obviously yeah. try and make sure that we always try and uplift the, the name of, of Wagyu per se. And if there's anyone that's that's on that same on that same wavelength or on that same um, sort of course in, in order to improve the quality of not only of Wagyu but of beef in South Africa, which 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 Wagyu is per se, it is it is a better quality beef than ordinary beef. Um, so we work with 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 other smaller platforms as well. Sorry, getting back to your question, I oh, got a little bit sidetracked. Um, there's okay. some smaller platforms that we do work with and um, weekly um, of the fillet lady in Cape Town um, Bay Meat Market also um, based in Cape Town so we, we slowly but surely creating a web and um, create a po um, positive relationships and good relationships with other, with other suppliers in order to, to, to help ourselves and to help them as well yeah yeah and I suppose you can never also grow too quickly because you have to manage the supply and demand and also the fact uh, the, that um, the growing process um, uh, or the raising 
cattle process that Henning mentioned that, you know, you raise the cattle for about three years. So you obviously yeah. need to manage, but it's great to know that you work with farm diet because we actually had them onto the podcast. I think it was last month. So it's nice to know that farmers are working, um, you know, with, with platforms such as these. So gentlemen, you know, um, as we close off our conversation today, I just want to find out. So what's the next step for Zuni Wagyu? Um, you know, have you guys discussed in terms of where do you guys see yourself in the next two to five years? I mean, there could be people, um, you know, watching this podcast that are outside South Africa and are thinking, damn, I'm hungry. I want a bit of that raggy. So, um, you know, someone could be ordering online right now. Um, so would, are there any prospects of delivering maybe like to neighboring countries, Swaziland, Lesotho, Zambia, Namibia? Um, you know, is, 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 that, is that a possibility? So I, I think uh, it's quite interesting. Internationally, there's, there's a big demand for Wagyu. It's, it's growing faster than the demand for Wagyu in, in South Africa almost. And um, oh. I believe Australia and China had a bit of a trade agreement fight. So now the entire China is looking for quality Wagyu to be um, exported out of countries and into it, um, where we kind of try and keeping uh, like our best product and ensuring that we always deliver it. But we are actually actively looking into spe specifically Africa. I think there's, a, there's an amazing target market there, and there's especially the tourism industry, and it, it really is an awesome opportunity. So we are actively looking at that. Further in the local um, community, we are, we are looking at possibly opening small niche butcheries and things like that. It's a little bit of a different spin to your average butchery. I, I think in general, and no offense to any uh, meat farmers, but the entire meat industry is dull and boring. And we, we're trying to put this new, young, fresh energy into it so that yeah. people can realize, okay, cool, there is actually a little bit of a different spin on it. Um, yeah. One thing that we do, which not a lot of people actually do, and it's been quite successful, is, is tasting events. So we're actually doing one tomorrow evening for Brian Abana. We did one two weeks ago for Seven Gacy. So we, we go and we run through eight different cuts. Um, we obviously talk about the cuts and go into detail what they do. And actually, it's similar to similar, to, similar concept to wine. And ask people, okay, what tasting notes do you taste out of this? And we, what we always do is we take all of the steaks from one carcass. And we explain to people that like how, how awesome it is that, and interesting it is that you get such different taste profiles and flavors out of just simply different cuts from the same animal. And that's, that's also a new little bit of a different spin where we actually, obviously, uh, when COVID allows it, go to people's house, houses and then present it and do a whole run through of the, all the different cuts that we do. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for your time, gentlemen. This was such a fantastic conversation. And, I, um, geez, I know that we'll see a lot of Zuni much more um, as well. And uh, maybe just please share your website uh, details so that people know where to find you. Um, so do I go to uh, Farm Direct or go directly to Zuni and maybe just spell out Zuni so that people know where to find you? Of course. Um, so they are always welcome to purchase the Farm Direct platform um, or any other platform, but our own website is Zuni Wagyu. That's Z U N E Y W A G Y U dot com. Um, Okay. It, every, all of the information run through there. Um, our information and all of our contact details on there. And by all means, please call us, um, ask us questions. We we like because we're, we're trying to educate the consumer here yeah. to understand what Wagyu is. Because once again, it is a luxury product that so kind of gives. And Henning loves to chat. He, just, <laughs> he loves to chat about me. That's it. <laughs> That's fantastic. It shows that he's passionate about his product. He's passionate about his business. And I mean, that's what's going to make the sale at the end of the day. Imagine if he wasn't talking about it, then we think, oh, you know, this is quite boring and who would want to buy? So yeah, it's great to see the passion in your, both your gentlemen's uh, faces. And I'm sure your parents must be proud of you and how you've pivoted the business and really focused on this uh, secondary and tertiary part of the business. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's yeah. a pleasure. Thank you so much. That was Devon and uh, Henning, uh, both from Zuni Wagyu. And they were telling us about their business, Zuni Wagyu. Wagyu is a beef premium product. Please go onto their website. I won't try butcher how uh, Henning spelled that, but um, if you missed today's live, just go towards the end, check out um, uh, their uh, website and order directly. And, you know, uh, what I liked about Henning, uh, in, in what he said is that, you know, he's always willing to understand the consumer's uh, perspective. So 
please buy their products and also give them feedback because I think that's what's going to make them great at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, here's the spelling. So it's Zuni, Z-U-N-E-Y, wagyu.com. Order and they are delivering throughout South Africa. And also you can get their products on Farm Direct SA if you um, are a regular to shop on that platform. And I must congratulate both our winners. They've, com they've commented, they've claimed their prize. So congratulations to you. Please continue to follow our campaign, Know Your Crop. And I will see you next week, Tuesday at 8 p.m. with another fantastic guest. That's it from me tonight. Goodbye. <laughs>